Hello, my name is Wes Dawson. Welcome back to another episode of Ghostbusting Wes with finally the finished product, my completed Spirit of Halloween upgrade project, whatever you want to call it, and hopefully with a solution to the bane of my YouTube existence, which is audio lag in my videos. So hopefully that will be addressed. If not, I guess we'll find out shortly. Uh, one thing I'm going to try to do is reduce the number of cuts, reduce the number of uh, clips I'm going to edit together. Hopefully that uh, should help. And by doing that, you should hear a bit more humming and hawing, a bit more cursing, a bit more, I don't know, frustrated grunts. Who knows? It'll be a fun adventure for everyone involved. So at least we'll fire this bad boy up and take a look at it. So the big changes I did since the last video was I swapped out the stock Spirit of Halloween wand dinky little thing nothing against dinky little things but uh yeah compared to the spangler wand it is lacking a certain uh you know certain presence so at least this will be a nice little you know decorative piece on the wall somewhere but now we got this bad boy here oh, that v hook that doesn't work very well and uh yeah so one thing i kind of mentioned in the last video Oh, was that the sound effects for this pack, uh, they run out of a Bluetooth speaker I have in the back, but they're not connected to the pack in any way. It's, it's more uh, sleight of hand trickery with my cell phone that I was powering up all the sound effects. But at least now it's Spangler wand attached. That's a bit different. I have a lot more, uh, a lot more bang for my buck, a lot more interaction with the pack itself. Uh, you know. The wand I'll show in a bit more detail uh, after, because at least uh, the main thing I did this, I swapped out both the grips. Made that a little bit more like an 84 wand, and I'll keep uh, the HasLab pack as a shotgun handled you know, monstrosity or whatever it is. Um, yeah, for my V-hook, I don't quite trust it yet. I got a, a 3D printed V-hook, and consensus is I wouldn't trust this, you know, rather expensive toy attached to the other rather expensive toy. So either I'm going to replace it with a magnet, a piece of metal, or I'll 3D print a stronger piece of, um, you know, I, I, many people had agreed I should have printed it vertically. Here we are. Anyway, let's take a look at this thing. All right. So speaking of the speaker, one thing I wanted to show was that this was really a neat little find because it came with a suction cup um, and an attachment on it to be able to put it into a shower or something like that. So I just cut off the suction cup, and now I can easily remove the speaker to charge it, put it back there. Um, I know some people weren't too fond of the placement of it, that it's right on the corner of the pack. But uh, for me, the fact that it has... Get this on. There we go. Uh, the fact that it has telephone, you know, I can actually make calls on it, and uh, I can hear the music myself better than if it's muffled behind my back. I'm, I'm pretty fine with where it is. I find online, the online ghost busting building community is like an even mix of people who are happy to help, happy to give suggestions, critiques, things like that, and other people just crapping on everybody's stuff. I, I'm kind of shocked by it. I don't particularly care. Like, in, in my view, this is my pack, so it'll look however the hell I want it to. Uh, a couple things I wanted to mention was this clip here was something, sorry, it's hard to point out when I'm looking through my cell phone, uh, it was a clip I had a bit of trouble finding. And I found it at an automotive parts shop. So if anybody is searching for that thing, because I found them on Amazon, but I want to buy a pack of like 20 clips and I'm going to use maybe two of them. I know, I think to be a bit more accurate, it has the metal, uh, the metal slit down the middle, but uh, this was the closest I could find. And speaking of pack accuracy, this little bad boy here, this tube is just a green wire. It's just a, you know, larger gauge wire with a couple 3D printed bits to accommodate it. And, uh... The other thing I want to show off here was just these fake welds. For anybody who's like kind of new to uh, this prop building stuff, all that is is just a hot glue gun blobbed over the edges, over the seams, and then uh, painted and aged accordingly. So that's a pretty neat little addition. So I'd also mentioned in a previous video I'd like to build some kind of jig to be able to lean the pack into when I work on it because... Uh, Last time I was, I actually busted, oops, I busted the end filter off the front of it because I was leaning a little bit too much on a weird angle on the bottom of it and it kind of popped it off. But I just want to show this connection here, which is basically, it's just a three quarter inch brass uh, plumbing connection. It had a nice fitting I thought looked a bit better than just the tube disappearing into the side of the proton pack. Uh, 
so this is very easy to install. The only thing I know if you want to run, uh, you could still run a wire through it if you wanted to. All that I did to attach this was, you know, it has its own little coupling, a uh, little uh, male end here. So I hot glued that in, hot glued the tip of the hose into the coupling, and I taped the living hell out of it as tight as I could with electrical tape. Um, if you're gonna go that route, as soon as you put the hot glue in, turn the coupling to make sure that the glue doesn't harden. You know, it has a little bit more mobility to be able to tie it back in because I noticed the kink of the hose kind of matters where it sits. The hose was sort of hanging in my face for a while, so that wasn't so uh, wasn't so pleasant. But um, yeah, so that worked very well. And one thing, I don't know if I'm the only one, I could I can't find just loom. I don't know if it's called just loom tube, but I can only find split loom. It's always split in the middle, so I just kind of put, uh, I've seen someone online using dashes of electrical tape to hold it in place, but um, eventually I may replace that with a solid, a more solid tube. That's three quarter inch hose as well. Okay, so originally I wanted to open this up again and show how I uh, connected my brass fitting in for the, the hose to the Neutrona wand, a couple different things. Don't feel like doing that again, so I'm going to leave it as is. Not much of a mystery. Basically, it's just uh, the three-quarter inch piece. The, the fitting fits through the bottom of the pack perfectly. I wedged it in there with a couple shims and then hot glued the living hell out of it. Uh, basically, anything that was sort of permanently staying in place, I put a nice thick layer of hot glue on there. So I noticed the pack, it does like to move a little bit uh, when, I'm, when I'm opening it up. So that way, you're going to try and solidify things a bit. So this connection was pretty straightforward, just hot glued it in, taped it in place. Uh, for the connection on the Neutrona wand, I was a little concerned about scrapping the end piece where the batteries go on the Neutrona wand. Um, originally I wanted to screw something into it so, you know, the tube could have something to bite onto to attach. But again, like if I scrap that, I'm in a bit of trouble. So what I ended up doing, since uh, recently I got my 3D printer working again, I'm gonna just be careful, I'll take this off. Now, if you look on my Instagram page, I either have or will be posting a few pictures of what I did for this exactly was basically I 3D printed a new plug. I'll put the link for the piece I found on uh, Thingiverse. 3D printed that plug. I already had printed out a little like, like cylindrical prism uh, that I put a screw through attached to the end of the plug. So inside this, it, like this nub here that kind of pushes the batteries in, there's almost the same thing coming out about an inch down the hose. So that way the split loom, I filled it full of hot glue, gripped it on, burnt my hand a bit. Literally, I did that. Not very bright, but it worked. And then I put a couple tie wraps, taped it up real good. And that's how I got the end of my Neutrona wand done. This way, anything happens to this, I still have the original plug that came with the wand. And, uh, you know, thank the great Lord Shabugamu for 3D printing. So something else I thought was worth mentioning was this little bolt kit I picked up off of Amazon. On a different, uh, kind of an unconventional size hex bolt of different lengths. Uh, what is it, an M, M3s, which couldn't find anywhere else, never really seen them. Um, that's why I taped my drill bit, as well as my Allen key that fits it. This way, uh, I never have to guess again. But these look great for, uh, you know, anywhere I could replace a screw with a little bolt, I did. A better way to see it is on the ghost trap, which is, you know, everywhere. I just, even on the corner pieces, I just add, drilled in, put a little bolt. Really helps it make a bit more, uh, you know, a bit more of an impact, more realistic look to it. And with this recent print, the same thing. I, I tried to print myself a lifeguard. Uh, well, I did. Um, the only problem is, see the bolts? I found a nice little addition. The 3D print lines are a little too evident for myself, so... Without putting a layer of Bondo on your 3D prints, they always end up looking um, like 3D prints, unfortunately. All right, well, that's basically the end of the video for all intents and purposes. Uh, for the most part, I'm very satisfied uh, with my build. I think I'm going to take a bit of time off the Spirit Pack. Uh, there's a couple things maybe to do. Like I said, probably swap my V-hook out for either a magnet or just a, a more solidly printed V-hook. Um, I already have in my Amazon cart a uh, carabiner. I don't know how I'm going to hook it up, but basically a t something on a retractable tether attached either to the waist or to the, the alice frame itself so that if ever I drop this, if ever this pops off the V-hook, it won't hit the ground. I don't think uh, this, as beautiful as the Hasbro Spengler Neutrona wand is, methinks it won't survive a fall to the ground very well. So uh, I definitely have that tethered onto the pack somehow. Um, and also maybe something for it to sit on, because one thing I kind of in foresight I would have maybe done differently um, is 
where I mounted the Alice frame onto the motherboard, right now all the weight is sitting on like these two kind of round clips that hold the kidney pads on the Alice frame. And that's probably not good, especially considering it's a Rothko frame, so it's not exactly military grade. And uh, yes, and also with this little brass uh, addition here, it's uh, causing a bit of issue that it's sticking out past it. So when I want this thing to sit on the floor, I gotta take the hose off every time. So I have a way to, to sit it up, prop it up some way. Probably also buy like a nice display shelf at Ikea or something to use, I don't know, uh, to throw this thing in with all the other ghost busting equipment and at least have a nice little display piece. And uh, speaking of Rothko and their kind of knockoff military crap, uh, and one other thing I bought, I didn't show off was, I bought this, uh, yep, this military flashlight here that I kind of attached to uh, the straps on the pack here. So this, it kind of made me think of like Ghostbusters 2 on the slime throwers. Uh, it's not exactly canon. Some people will probably hate it, make their skin crawl. Again, this is my pack. I'll do whatever the hell I want to it. So uh, that's there for now. And uh, on a parting note, I'll say this was so much fun. Uh, anybody who has the time, who has uh, the money, because you know it was to do things uh, as quickly as I wanted to. It costed me a bit more than I intended because obviously if I was patient. I took my time and you know looked for better price. I wanted it now. I wanted it ready, so I just did it. I'll probably focus a bit more on a diorama I've been printing. Uh, I got various pieces ready to go. I can't pull them out; they're all jammed in a box. But basically, these plasma series figures will be put to use on uh, some kind of stand. Unfortunately, this uh, Vince Clortho that comes with the plasma series figures uh, is gigantic. It's a beautiful piece. I'll put it somewhere else, but it's way too big to be on display with these figures. So I find it's like twice the size that it should be. So this 3D printed terror dog with a broken foot is going to be repaired and uh, painted instead. All right, so probably the only specific question I got about this build was on the Cyclotron uh, bumper covers I printed. So this is the bottom half for the purposes of this demonstration. It's going to be a top half. So, so this isn't a poorly drawn robot garbage can thing. Pretend this is your Spirit of Halloween pack stock out of the box. So I took my printed piece, placed it on it. You're going to see it sits almost perfectly on the lip that's there. It fits seamlessly pretty well. And uh, I just took a marker, not a pen, and I just marked the edge of where the top of this Cyclotron cover, the printed piece, will sit. Of course, it sat, you know, about say an eighth of an inch in. And then I drilled holes through there in two places, put the covers back on, taped them in place, flipped over the pack. I had my holes already drilled, drilled my pilot test holes that would hit here, drilled those out. And then when I put it on, I was able to put uh, two screws through the back of the, from the, the inside of the proton pack, pin that in place, a little bit of hot glue as well. And that way I know they won't fall off. That'd be pretty embarrassing to have one of these just fall to the ground and just watch your dreams shatter at some convention or a Halloween party or something like that. So, um, Anytime I could, I would attach things with screws to make sure they were there as solidly as possible. Okay, so before I end this video, I think the last thing I will show in a bit more detail is what I did for the Neutrona wand to replace the grips, because I've seen uh, a couple people asking on the, a few forums I'm in how people did it, how they went about it. And again, like I said, you know, some people will be very helpful. Other people are like, hey man, there's three years worth of questions. Go filter through those first. Personally, I'm not going to read through three years of posts. I'm just going to ask the question. And if people don't like it, kick me out of the group. I don't care. Uh, so what I did for this thing, two 3D printed pieces. Uh, the rubber, the original rubber on this thing cuts off super easy. And again, if you check my Instagram, follow the page for all kinds of great sporadic updates. Um, this thing cuts off super easy. I 3D printed a little replacement piece, a little, uh, little you know, three little buckle piece that goes in there. Taped it with some hockey tape and the front uh, again on the Instagram you can see kind of the process of how I did it 3d printed a piece added the bondo but I kind of purposely left uh, some holes and nicks and you know uneven little bits in it because I just think I just think it looks better so uh, not me thinks I think it looks better and that's basically it. that's how easy it was to convert this into like an 84 wand I kind of wanted to paint it to match my pack but I'm a little concerned about having paint seep into uh, the wand itself and then messing something up. So I decided not to. 
Well, my name is Wes Dawson. This has been Ghostbusting Wes. Thank you so much for joining me. Listen, like, subscribe. Get your friends, get your family members, enemies, people you haven't talked to in 20 years. Call them up. Say, check out this YouTube page specifically about Ghostbusting crap. I'm sure you'll love it. Um, thank you so much. Honestly, it's been a lot of fun building this. been fun filming stuff. And I'll probably have a few other projects coming up now that i got my 3D printer working again. Uh, I may do a little video about the ghost trap that I built, or the ghost trap that I modified, rather. I didn't actually build it. It, is, it was a Walmart purchase that I had modified. And uh, more excitingly, uh, the upcoming arrival of my HasLab Proton Pack. I'd like to be doing an unboxing of that as well. I know there's a couple videos out from people in Europe and other areas that it's already arrived in Canada. It's not arrived yet. I believe it's shipping in the next week or so. So that'll be a lot of fun. I haven't checked any unboxings myself because I'd like to save it, uh, save it for my own personal, my own personal excitement, my own personal journey. Um, I did watch all the Hasbro, uh, you know, release videos, so I'm really looking forward to having that and connecting that other beautiful Neutrona wand to it, having two proton packs, and just wondering what I've done with my time and money. So, my name's Wes Dawson, this is Ghostbusting Wes, thank you so much.